in the headlines. Reactions trail the verdict of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal. UNICEF warns of $100 billion economic loan, economic loss over conflict in northeast Nigeria. Borno State Government prescribes seven-year jail term for political thuggery. On the foreign scene, Gabon's military says deposed President Ali Bongo free to leave the country. Hello there, good afternoon and welcome to the news update on Trust TV. I'm Abdullahi Ahmed. We'll begin the update with the latest from the tribunal as President Bola Tinbu has pledged to renew an energized focus on delivering his vision of a unified, peaceful and prosperous Nigeria. Uh, the president spoke on Wednesday in New Delhi while reacting to the judgment of the presidential election petition tribunal in Abuja. A visibly elated President Tinbu welcomed the verdict, indicating his preparedness to serve all Nigerians irrespective of political diversity, persuasions, faith, and tribal inclinations. Here's Kane Diamodu with the rest of the story. There will be conflicting reactions in the day ahead to the judgment reached by the five-member bench led by Justice Harno Samani in interpreting the law. For President Tinubu, it obviously is a welcome development, and he acknowledges the court's exclusive respect for the merits of the petitions brought forward. This, he says, reflects the continuing maturation of Nigeria's legal system and the advancement of Africa's largest democracy. Uh, it's been a very, very strong and emotional journey for all of us, uh, struggling for democracy truth and justice for all. Today, we give kudos to the judiciary for their indefeasible commitment to rule of law. The president is already looking forward and is inviting Nigerians to support his government to improve the livelihood of all citizens. The theme for Nigeria is for us to pull Nigeria up and be proud of a country that's the only country that we have. One out of four black race is in Nigeria. Urging Nigerians to elevate the spirit of patriotism above partisan considerations, President Inumbu is promising to meet and exceed their expectations. Don't look back, look forward. Let's pull the country forward. And with your help, my friend, my colleagues, and all of you, I promise to do more. There's still a lot of work to be done to win over citizens who are disappointed by the judgment of the Presidential Elections Petitions Court. But this, the president believes, can be done through diligent hard work with a team that has been put in place for that purpose. Kainde Amudu, Trust TV News. Well, staying with the reaction from the verdict of the Presidential Election Petitions Tribunal, Nigeria's Vice President Kashmir Shetima and the National Chairman of the APC, Abdullah Ganduji, have held the judgment of the Presidential Election Petitions Court. According to the vice president, after all said and done, democracy is the winner. He urged the petitioners to join President Bola Tinubu in the task of national unity. Today is a great day for Nigeria. The Nigerian judiciary had proved itself to be the guardians for justice and fairness against the sirens of deception. It's a battle between the will of the people and the forces of misinformation and disinformation. 
But democracy has finally triumphed. This is the beginning of the maturity of democracy in this country. We have to thank the politicians, even the leaders of the political parties. We have to thank them for showing, showing maturity, especially the presidential candidate for PDP and that of uh, Labour Party. Uh, we have to appreciate them, we have to thank them, because they also do contribute to stability of democracy uh, in this country. Shatima, however, said democracy is not a destination, but a journey. It tests our resolve, our intent, our commitment to be the custodians of the will of the people. My principal, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, is eternally indebted to the Nigerian people and to the leadership of the party. Meanwhile, the People's Democratic Party presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar's lead counsel, Chris Uche, SAN, has said the legal team has been ordered to appeal against the unanimous judgment upholding the victory of President Bola Chinubu. He made this known while briefing journalists on the decision of Atiku on the judgment. Uche, who expressed disappointment over the ruling, said his client and the legal team had expected the court would have given a verdict that would improve and encourage the use of technology in elections. We had the instructions of our clients as soon as possible to go to the Supreme Court. We have asked for the records. So we have, today as you saw in court, we have asked for the records, we have asked for the judgment, we are going to apply for transmission of records because we have a very limited time to push this. So the struggle continues, yeah. and as it is said, it is not over until it, it is, is over. over. Well, the judgment has been delivered, but we have not received justice. The presidential elections petitions court had delivered a 12-hour marathon judgment, throwing out the petitions of the Allied People's Movement, the petitions of the People's Democratic Party, and its flag bearer, Tiku Abubakar, as well as the petitions of Labour Party and its presidential candidate, Peter Obi. The tribunal dismissed the petitions of the three parties challenging the victory of President Bola Tinubu of the All Progressives Congress in the February 25, 2023 poll. The five-man panel, led by Justice Haruna Samani, did not only dismiss the consolidated petitions of the PDP, the APM and the Labour Party, the panel also clearly affirmed the victory of Tinubu in the presidential poll. Now, the Deputy President of the Nigerian Senate, Baro Jibril, has held the judgment of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal, affirming the victory of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Baro, in a statement by a special advisor in media and publicity, Ismail Mudashir, says the judgment of the tribunal has reaffirmed the choice of Nigerians on President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The five-member tribunal panel, chaired by Justice Haruna Samani, had on Wednesday upheld the election of President Tinubu, while urging all the all the parties to accept the outcome of the tribunal, the Deputy Senate President says Nigerians, irrespective of party differences, need to team up with the present administration to address the challenges facing the country. He reiterated the commitment of the Parliament to come up with legislation to support the various initiatives of the executive in line with the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Meanwhile, the Labour Party has rejected the judgment of the Presidential Election Petitions Court in the party's petition challenging the electoral victory of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu of the All Progressive Congress in the February 25th presidential poll 2023. In a statement after the verdict of the tribunal on Wednesday, Labour Party's National Publicity Secretary, Obiora Ifo, says justice was not served in the petitions of the party against the APC and President Bolamit Tinubu. The statement also says the Labour Party will make its next move known upon consultations with its lawyers after receiving the certified true copy of the judgments. Now, the party says the judgment of the court, quote, did not reflect the law and the desire of the people. All right, let's move on to some of the day's other news now. Residents of Bauchi State have reacted to the verdict of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal expressing mixed feelings about the ruling of the panel. 
Now, for some, despite the outcome, the petitioners should put Niger first and discontinue further legal pursuit in the interest of nation building. Adamu Imam has more. Presiding judge of the election tribunal, Justice Haruna Zamani, led four other judges in dismissing the major planks on which Peter Obi rested his petition, challenging the victory of President Bola Tinubu of the All Progressives Congress in the 2023 general elections. In Bauchi State, residents have been reacting to the verdict of the tribunal. As citizens of this country, we know what we are going through. However, we accept the outcome of the election and the subsequent verdict of the tribunal because God chose him to lead us. My appeal for those who won is that they should make sure they work for the masses of this country and not siphon Nigerians' wealth and enjoy it with their families in the name of leadership. Since there are constitutional provisions for redress, if the judgment is not favorable to the petitioners, they can approach the Supreme Court. Our position is that if the judges did justice to the petitions, people should accept the verdict in good faith. It is not our wish in any case to lose, but God has already predestined what is going to happen. Those that won and lost at the tribunal should think about Nigeria and move the country forward. Let everybody go back and uh, exercise more because more the fact we are we are we are, we, we have not lose hope. We are coming back. Uh, we are in fact we we'll, we we'll, we'll win the battle at least before before three three years now we we'll enter under election. The tribunal also rejected ten out of the thirteen witnesses presented by Mr. Obi and ruled that the judgment of the U.S. Direct Court in Northern Illinois ordering the forfeiture of $460,000 being connected to proceeds of narcotic does not disqualify Tinubu from participating in the last general election. Samani stressed that the judgment was not given in a criminal case, adding that the decision does not amount to conviction as envisaged under the Nigerian constitution. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. All right, let's uh, unpack and get some more insight into some of the developments, especially after the fallout of uh, the announcement of the verdict by the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal. Join us via Zoom now to share perspective on the fallout of uh, that uh, delivery of the judgment is Mukhtar Suleiman, a communication strategist. Uh, on public affairs analyst. Mukhtar, thank you very much for joining us. As a Nigerian, give me your initial thoughts on what you make of the verdict, plus what the people are saying about it. For some, uh, judgment was delivered, but justice was not. What is your take? Uh, I think the idea of what justice is and isn't, isn't left for those of us who are not a part of the um, entire litigation process is going to be quite difficult for us to actually determine what justice is and isn't. One thing I've come to learn about the law is that the law does not care about your feelings, it does not care about what is right, it does not care about what is wrong, it only cares about what you can prove in court. Because if you come to, there are so many variables to how justice can actually be attained. The road to justice is a very tortuous one, and if you're not prepared for it, then it gets very, very difficult. If you listen to the judgment yesterday by um, Justice Tamama, I, I, I hope I pronounced, it, pronounced that properly, he kept, you kept hearing things like petitioners fail to prove, petitioners fail to do this, petitioners fail to do that. So you get to see that for most of the judgment that were actually passed by that uh, petition tribunal was based on technicalities from the way the cases were filed by the petitioners. Right. Uh, but it's safe to say that the legal counsel of all the petitioners disagree with, the, with this particular judgment. It, it does appear we're, we're likely going to get a part two at the Supreme Court. But talking about feelings and emotion, it does matter in a court of public opinion, especially if you're a President Tinubu, that wants the support of Nigerians emotionally to be invested in what you're doing. Give me your sense on how he can navigate that because that legitimacy question around his mandate is still going to hover around the administration until perhaps or even after the Supreme Court makes a decision on uh, the verdict of uh, the presidential election petition tribunal. 
I think this is very clear from the results that INEC rolled out that Pre President Bola Metinimo did not get the majority vote. You see the split vote between Atiko, um, President, former Vice President Atiko, and um, Peter Hobi himself. You get to see that their combined vote is way higher. It's about 4 million votes higher than what President Bola Metinimo won the election with um, by. So it is obvious that he did not get the majority vote of the country. That is not even a matter to deal here. But the question is which candidate got the highest vote among others. So that is what we're actually counting. So the person has that to contend with that the general public, most of the general public that voted did not actually vote for him. They either voted for Atiku or they voted for um, Peter Obi. So he has to live with that expectation and see how he can prove us right that the uh, mandate that has been given to him by the 8 million votes he accrued during the general election is something that would be worth it because he has actually said at times that number that irrespective of your political leaning or your political ideology i am here to serve the nigeria as a collective country and we're seeing how he's actually going to do that as time goes on do you think the the televised nature of the delivery of that judgment does anything to pacify and just to understand that uh, because a lot of people really think that this is all premeditated in fact we've had several <coughs> accusations and allegations that uh, the, the judgment was written weeks ago, even though that has uh, been uh, debunked at uh, several levels. But you get the feeling that many Nigerians think that this was mission impossible in the first place, that the, that the tribunal itself couldn't have gone against the grain to give a different verdict. But do you think that the televised nature of uh, the judgment being delivered to Nigerians for 13 hours or so would have pacified Nigerians to, to understand where at least these uh, uh, justices are coming from? Yeah, I think if you listen to the judgment being read carefully and critically and without bias and without your feelings in the, uh, in the mix of the entire thing, you get to see that they were very detailed and very cautious. You hear them uh, citing Supreme Court precedences as to why certain rulings were the way they were. You hear them uh, uh, citing the Constitution, citing the Evidence Act as to why XYZ evidence was struck out or admitted or not admitted or as to why a particular witness was actually the vote of the, the testimony of a particular witness was inadmissible in the judgment part. So I think you, you ought to have listened to the judgment holistically and critically for you to actually see how much work and detail actually went into the judgment that they passed. Because it is the, the, the thing about the law, to the best of my knowledge, is that the burden of proof is on the plaintiff. So, and the Constitution protects me as a defendant to actually provide evidence for you, protect me as a defendant rather, to actually provide any evidence for you to actually make your case. Like one of the justices said, you don't expect the courts to go and accumulate evidences for you. It is something you have to do by yourself. I think the petitioners just failed in terms of how in certain basic technicalities that they, they, it made their case very, very null. So it makes it very difficult for them to put up a very strong fight at the petition tribunal. So I, I, I hope that that can change if they go to the Supreme Court. Perhaps they might have learned from um, the activities of this particular um, um, the appeal court, as the case may be. Perhaps they might have learned a thing or two. I don't know if they will be allowed to introduce new evidences and introduce new witnesses at the Supreme Court. I don't know if there will be a day-to-day -day litigation or if the Supreme Court would have to review the judgment by the uh, Court of Appeal and see if there are any lapses or any violations that will require right. for them to reopen the case to more litigation. Uh, I, I do believe that reviewing uh, that judgment is a significant part of what the Supreme Court has to do going forward should uh, the petitioners decide to take the next uh, line of action. But Mukhtar Suleiman, communication expert and public affairs analyst, thank you very much for your insight. We do appreciate you very much for sparing the time. Thank you for joining us on the news update. Thank you so much for having me. Right, uh, moving on to some of the day's other news now. Uh, a new study uh, by the United Nations uh, Children's Fund, UNICEF, has revealed that as of 2021, the Nigerian economy was 2.5% smaller than it would have been without the conflict equating to a cumulative loss of approximately $100 billion over the last 13 years in Northeast Nigeria. Now, it also revealed that over 2 million people currently remain displaced while around 1 million children had missed school due to the armed conflict in the Northeast. 
Now, the study detailed the devastating economic impact of the ongoing conflict in northeast Nigeria. It also illustrated how violence and grave violations against children have led to a dire economic downturn affecting not just the conflicted region, but the entire country as a whole. Speaking on the report, the UNICEF representative in Nigeria, Christine Mundiate, says data collected brings a harrowing reality into sharp focus as the findings are not merely a localized issue since the economic and social repercussions of the conflict are felt nationwide and beyond. She called for swift and unified action to end the conflict, adding that the time to act is now. Well, you're watching the news update on Trust TV. Coming up ahead after the break, we take a look how at how putting food on the table remains a challenge for physically challenged persons. Details coming up ahead after the break. We don't have the know-how of exporting this yam to other countries. So the highest point we go is Port Harcourt and sometimes Worry. Hey, yeah, come on, go When we talk about agricultural produce, we look at quality. And what is quality? Quality is fit for purpose. Getting to the port was difficult because your container can be on the queue for over 30 days. Imagine if you are having sesame or hibiscus for 30 days locked inside a container. So these are some of the reasons why we are having rejection. Welcome back to the news. Here's a quick reminder of our top stories at this hour. Reaction continues to trail the presidential election petition tribunal's verdict. UNICEF warns of $100 billion economic loss over conflict in northeast Nigeria. Now, the Borno State Governor, Baba Ganazulum, has assented the State Criminal Justice Administration Law 2023 amended bill that prescribes a seven-year prison term for anyone guilty of political thuggery in the state. The governor sent it to the bill alongside eight other bills passed by the State House of Assembly at the Government House on Wednesday in Maiduguri. Zulum said it was a proactive measure taken to curtail the increase in the number of reported cases of rape and political thuggery across Borno State. He noted that within the last four years, the executive had sent over 80 bills to both the 9th and 10th uh, State Assembly. Zulum commended the State Assembly for the cordial working relationship accorded him as governor of the state. Presenting the bills for assent, the Speaker of the House, Abdul Karim Lawan, says the 9th Assembly, the House, received a total of 67 bills, among which the 64 bills were passed, while the remaining three bills were passed by the 10th Assembly. Now, people with special needs are among the hardest hit by the economic crunch in Nigeria, which was triggered by the removal of fuel subsidy. To many, the struggle to put food on the table remains a top priority while foregoing other responsibilities and necessities. Abdullah Yamadi met with some of the people living with uh, disability in Mashi local government area of Kasina State who shared their experiences. Even though some of these people with special needs struggle to make end meets, their major life dream is to have a tricycle to ease their difficulties of movement. Their difficulties has been made worse with the recent fuel subsidy removal, which affected the standard and cost of living. I can't tell 
This is the first time in history people with special needs are considered in anything from the government. Many of us are feeling the crunch as we go to bed on empty stomach. However, we are now carried along. We have over five special advisors and four special assistants in this local government alone. We thank God. For this vulnerable group in Maishi, it is a dream come true that the local council distributes 10 recycles and other food items to ease some of their difficulties. This gesture comes at a time when the harsh economic realities is biting hard, not only on the people with special needs, but the generality of the population. Uh, the people with the special needs and they also be, belong to this local government area. As government, it is necessary, it is simple for us to come up with a program that will take care of them. Uh, not only the government, uh, it is necessary for any other individual within and outside our society to look after the need of these people. Public commentators suggest the immediate implementation of more measures to cushion the effects of the current economic difficulties. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Trust Television News, Kazana. On the international scene, the military junta in Gabon has declared that ousted President Ali Bongo is free to leave the nation and travel abroad. General Brace. Oligi Guillema says in a statement that was aired on state television that he was, quote, has freedom of movement and can travel abroad if he wishes. Since the military takeover on August 30th, which occurred without any loss of life and less than an hour after Bongo's party declared his re-election in a ballot that the purchased deemed fraudulent, Bongo, who had been in power for 14 years, had been placed under house arrest. In October of 2018, Bongo experienced a severe stroke that left him physically disabled with particular difficulties using his right arm and leg. Well, that sums up the news update at this hour. I'll be back with more a little later at 2 o'clock. For now, follow us across our social media platform to catch up with other contents across our social media platform and visit trustv.com for more news. My name is Abdullahi Ahmed. Thank you for watching.